Welcome to the next video in the evolution series. This video will be looking at life on earth.8.4.23, which is explained by the change from an anoxic to an oxic atmosphere was significant in the evolution of living things. So firstly, we're going to have a look at a definition, definition of what an anoxic environment is and what an oxic environment is, and then have a look at how changing from anoxic to oxic helped organisms to evolve into what they are today. So up until about 2.3 billion years ago, the earth was considered to be anoxic. There was plenty of oxygen atoms available. But they were all chemically combined in water in the form of H2O and carbon dioxide and a couple of other compounds that weren't in the usable form of oxygen that we know today. So basically the definition of an anoxic atmosphere is one that it is defined one that is defined as being deficient or lacking in free oxygen. Geological evidence for the early Earth having little oxygen is what we call banded iron formations. So for these rocks to form, iron must have been available in a soluble form in seawater. In today's situation, iron is quickly oxidized and these iron rich rocks can no longer form. So when there's lots of oxygen available, okay, we can't create these banded iron formations so we don't see them anymore. So they stopped being formed about uh, 17,000 million years ago, 1.7 billion years ago, inferring that the seas became oxidizing, containing, containing large amounts of dissolved oxygen at this time. So we can see in the pictures, the definite areas that show the iron formations. Okay, so banded iron formations is simply where the iron in the seawater combined with oxygen to form these rusty type areas of rock in between the other layers. So the change from anoxic to oxic was due to the activities of photosynthetic bacteria, mainly the cyanobacteria. So the first oxygen would have been dissolved in the oceans until it accumulated enough and was able to be released as a gas into the atmosphere where it then accumulated again. Since oxygen is lighter than carbon dioxide, it would have risen into the stratosphere where reactions and energy from the sun converted this oxygen into ozone. So first off, we would have had these cyanobacteria living in the water. They would have converted uh, substances into oxygen. Okay, so carbon dioxide into oxygen. Oxygen would have built up in the oceans until it reached the level where the water was saturated with oxygen and then it would have moved into the atmosphere, risen into the stratosphere, and then through the energy from the sun, changed from oxygen into ozone to create our ozone layer. But then we also would have had free oxygen in the form of O2 available. Eventually, the oxygen began building up in the atmosphere and the air became oxic. An oxic environment is defined as one where oxygen is freely available. This environment was toxic for many organisms that survived in the anoxic environment, leading to the evolution of our eukaryotes. So our eukaryotes we know have a true nucleus and true membrane bound organelles. And some of the simpler prokaryotic organisms that existed at the time weren't able to deal with the increased amount of oxygen. So they died off leading to this change into our eukaryotic organisms. 650 million year old fauna fossils from Edicara Ediacara, sorry, in South Australia, show that the atmosphere had now shifted to oxic from anoxic. So Ediacara, as we saw, was um, in South Australia. In the video that we watched in class, we saw some of the fossils that were found there. So the main part of the dot point is to explain the significance on the evolution of life of the change from an anoxic to an oxic atmosphere. So a change from an anoxic to an oxic atmosphere had a significant influence on the conditions of early Earth and the evolution of living things. Anaerobic organisms began to decline while photosynthetic organisms became more abundant. So anaerobic organisms are those that survive without oxygen. So obviously because we now have more oxygen available, these organisms um, are not favored for and they began to die out. Whereas photosynthetic organisms, they were the ones that were able to convert the carbon dioxide into oxygen and they began to thrive and become more abundant. Aerobic organisms, so those that can use oxygen, became more efficient in energy production through the process of cellular respiration, 
which led to an increase in activity and eventually led to an increase in the complexity and size of the organisms that were present. The formation of the ozone layer, which is made up of O3, so those oxygen atoms that headed off into the stratosphere and became the ozone layer, helped to block out harmful radiation from the sun. This reduced the amount of ultraviolet light reaching the earth and had a significant influence on future organisms as it protected them from the dangerous radiation from the sun and enabled them to move onto land. So as we looked at in previous videos, we know that the radiation from the sun, so lots of UV radiation was bombarding the surface of the earth, as well as having an increased temperature. So by the creation of the ozone layer, we could block out some of those harmful rays, still have enough energy or radiant energy get, getting to the surface of the earth to provide it with enough warmth for life to exist, but also help to drop that temperature so it was a little bit more easy to, um, to sort of cope with. Okay, so we've looked at a couple of different reasons why the change from anoxic to oxic is significant. Mostly um, the increase of oxygen obviously meant that organisms could become more um, complex and the formation of the ozone layer helped to move organisms from the water onto the land. And that brings us to the end of this video and thank you for watching.